In our message, we will see how God uses gospel encouragement as well as the coaching of brothers and sisters in the faith to expose the blind spots in our lives and to strengthen relationships with God and others. Life is full of choices. Some choices you look back at with regret. Other choices you wish were more clear. How can you live with a confident purpose and joyful resiliency? The Holy Spirit promises that He is with you. He'll direct you through His Word to a life of power and purpose. See how you can enjoy direction in your life from the one who forgives your past, directs your present, and holds your future. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Hi, my name is Dan Slow from Pastor at Crosswalk Church in Phoenix, Arizona, and it's my privilege to bring the message to you today. We are in a message series called Directed, and today uh, the message is Directed to be Coachable. I don't know if you happen to, to listen to our previous week message, but one of the things I referenced was that someone talked to me and asked me a question I, I found very interesting, and that was, if you could talk to yourself 30 years ago, what three pieces of advice would you give uh, to encourage your younger self having all the experience of, of where you are right now? And one of the things I talked about last week was about having people, uh, people around me and the encouragement of people. And this message is, is very similar. The second thing that I would tell myself at a younger age is, Dan, you need to keep learning and growing. That even though God has brought you to a place where you are, where you are useful, where he can take you is only going to happen if you continue to learn and grow. And I had this attitude like, you know, I graduated from the seminary. I know all of this. Now I just want to go do things. But what I misunderstood maybe a little bit is I still, and I still do, have a lot of learning and growing to do that's going to help me and others that I minister to. And so as you hear this message, uh, it's really the question is, how can I grow into everything God wants me to be? How can I, on the one hand, be thankful for where God has brought me and yet keep learning and growing to go where God wants to take me? So in our message, it, it follows that as well. We're in Acts chapter 18, beginning with the 18th verse, and we're going to see how God used Paul. Paul continued to grow through his experiences, but also another individual will be introduced to is Apollos, another pastor. So first of all, we start in Acts 18. Paul stayed on in Corinth for some time. So he was in Corinth for about a year and a half, and it's a place where Paul would serve and Apollos, another pastor, would later serve. Then he, meaning Paul, left the brothers and sisters and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. Before he sailed, he had his hair cut off at Centuria because of a vow he had taken. They arrived at Ephesus where Paul left Priscilla and Aquila. He himself went into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. But they asked him to spend more time with them. He declined. But as he left, he promised, I will come back if it is God's will. Then he set sail for Ephesus. When he landed at Caesarea, he went up to Jerusalem and greeted the church and then went down to Antioch. After spending some time in Antioch, Paul set out from there and traveled from place to place throughout the region of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. Now, as we look at this, this is a lot of different places, and it really reads like an itinerary of what Paul did. But as you hear these words and, and compare them with previous portions we've read on, on his missionary journeys, what we see is that 
Paul, as he did his missionary journeys, he, he learned by his own experiences. And one of them was in his relationship with the Jewish people, going to different synagogues. And what he was finding was that he would still go to a synagogue, but he wouldn't stay there ridiculously long periods of time like he did when he started because it always seemed like he was a lightning rod in those areas. So a lot of times he would go there for a short visit, share with them the gospel, and, and then continue moving on. And so as we think about this with our own learning and growing, understand that your own experiences, my own experiences, all of those do, things do help us keep learning and growing. And we want to learn uh, sometimes from what we do right, but hopefully also from the things that we do wrong that we want to keep failing forward, that we will learn from our mistakes. The second part of this is also that every place Paul went, we were told that he gave gospel encouragement. And that's part of the learning and growing, both for us to receive it and to give it. And so a gospel encouragement could be something like, you know Jesus loves you, right? You know that I, I care about you and your heart and your soul and, and I never want you to forget that your sins are forgiven and you are loved by God and by me. Those are examples of gospel encouragements and they are things that we can never get enough of. And that is why on a daily basis, whether it's through our own reading that we come to portions of, of the gospel that we highlight and we hold closely in our hearts, but it's also something that we want to share with each other. The promises of God that we can hold on to it at every point in our lives. So that's part of this is the learning and growing through our experiences and again through, through the gospel, hearing it again and again. Now we, we pivot a little bit. We go from Paul to uh, uh, a man named Apollos and Priscilla and Aquila. So here's what happens. Verse 24. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man and had a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak publicly in the synagogue. And so now we have Apollos. Praise the Lord. We don't know a lot about him. This is where he was first introduced by Luke. But what we do know is he knew the Old Testament prophecies. He knew that they were fulfilled in Christ. Someone had taken some time to invest in him. And probably the thing that stands out most about Apollos is he is incredibly gifted. He is a gifted communicator. He's a, a gifted speaker. He's good at apologetics, meaning uh, questions of asking the questions and giving answers and in debate. That he was very good, very good at, at thinking on his feet. Very good. I'm sure he, he was an excellent preacher and individuals would have, have loved uh, listening to him and he was a great asset to the church. And... His knowledge wasn't complete, that, that is specifically in baptism, that he knew about John's baptism, which was a baptism of repentance, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. But when Jesus came and baptized, he baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so Apollos was incomplete in his knowledge and, and it's just this reality that we don't want to miss. Why do we keep on learning and growing? Because all of us have blind spots. And these blind spots can be about knowledge, things that we simply don't know that others can teach us. They can also be blind spots about character and, and things we don't see in ourselves uh, that others can see. I want you to think about that just for a moment, what a blind spot is. Uh, with my car, the older car I have, I don't have blind spot assistance. Uh, the, the blind spot assistance I have in my car is when someone is riding with me and I might turn on a, a blinker to change lanes and they yell, Dan, look out, there's, there's a car there. 
And by definition, I, I can't see it because it's in my blind spots. It, it's in a place where I can't see. And, and so someone who cares about you when you're driving is going to point that out. Now the question is, how do I respond to that? Sometimes I can, it scares me a little bit. Sometimes I can get angry. I, I feel like, don't yell at me. And yet the blind spots, we, we need that so it doesn't cause a serious crash. And even in your car now, you probably have a, some type of a light that goes on, a warning to warn you of your blind spots. And so what happens though is, is through coaching, to when we want to be coachable, is when we use others what they can see to help me see what I can't see. And that, that's really kind of what, what coaching is, is that, that an individual helps us see something that we're missing and helps us to come to a, a better understanding of it uh, so that our ministry, our lives can be enhanced. This makes me think, when I, when I think of this, an illustration that I would use is, uh, especially when my kids were young and they were growing up, that there were times I loved playing with the kids and especially at night when I get home from work and they're getting ready for bed and would have the boys there maybe watching TV and would, would play with them on the floor and sometimes it would turn into some all-star wrestling and things like that. And there were times when Tanya would say, Dan, stop you're hurting them, that, that you don't realize how much you're, you're pressing on them or you don't realize that they're, they're still small and, and, and you're hurting them. And times like that, again, I, I, I sometimes would get defensive, but the reality of it was is, yeah, sometimes I didn't realize exactly how much I was hurting them. And, and it's that way still too in my life that I, I have blind spots. And people need to remind me that my words, that my actions are, are taken in ways that maybe I just don't see. How about you? Can you see that, that, that need for being coached in your life? Maybe pointing out areas of, of, of sin, areas where uh, maybe you don't even see it, but it's causing hurt and harm in, in relationships. It is a true friend a true brother and sister in Christ who can help us to see these and then to help us change. And that's the next part. And, and that's okay, so, so Apollos had a misunderstanding of baptism. So what happened? Priscilla and Aquila coached him. Uh, it says, verse 26b, when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more adequately. I love this, that, that they didn't necessarily deal with this right in that moment in front of everyone else. But what they did is, is they invited him to their home. Hey, let, let's have dinner. Let's talk about this. Let's uh, see that I have your best interest in mind, that I love you, that I care about you. And what we can do then is help you see some of these gaps that you have. And so the first part of this, as, as we look at coaching, is that you need to be humble enough to receive it. That, that, that there's a humility that each one of us needs to have to say, I don't have all the answers and there's room that I need to learn and grow and, and to see my blind spots. But the second part of the humility of coaching is in how you share it with someone. That you also do that humbly, understanding that it's by the grace of God that I'm able to see what I can see and I want to share that with you because I love you. Now, as we look at this, all of us, no exceptions, all of us are at a point in our lives where we can give coaching, that there are things that we've learned from our experiences, from God's word, that we can share with someone. But we're also in a situation, all of us, including me, where you still need to receive that coaching. And so there's always this give and take that, that takes humility. That's not about me being smart. It's not about you. It's not about that. But rather, it's about keeping learning and growing. And I maybe here also want to, to stress is that there's a difference between coaching, helping someone to see maybe an area where they can grow and helping them grow, and simply being a critic. 
just criticizing, just pointing out someone's mistake. I don't like this and I don't like that and you do this and you do that. That is not coaching and, and it's really not what God is calling us to do either. But rather, it's this helping someone to see something and then helping them to see the next steps where they can, can take the steps we need to take to continue to learn and grow. Apollos went on from there. He, he benefited from their coaching. And then the next thing that happens is Acts 18, uh, 27 and 28. When Apollos wanted to go to Achaia, the brothers and sisters encouraged him and wrote to the disciples there to welcome him. When he arrived, he was a great help to those who by grace had believed, for he vigorously refuted his Jewish opponents in public debate proving from the scriptures that Jesus was the Messiah. I love this, it, 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 that as you see Apollos and his willingness to learn and grow made him even more effective as a servant in God's kingdom. And specifically here, he wanted to go to a different place. He wanted to help other individuals out. And how did he do that? Again, he, he did it by refuting the Jewish opponents and, and proving from the scriptures that Jesus was the Messiah. He had incredible gifts for speaking. He had great gifts for debate, and, and especially with the Jews, because of his knowledge of the Old Testament and his experience there, he was able to help them see and use uh, scripture, use the Bible to help them see as well. And when you think about that as why you want to learn and grow, why each and every one of us wants to, is because it's not only a blessing to us, but when leaders continue to be coached, when leaders continue to learn and grow, everyone benefits. Everyone with whom you come into contact benefit from what you've learned and as you meet with them and, and have conversations, you benefit from what they have learned. And this makes me think, I know I talk a lot about our recovery ministry, and one of the things about recovery ministry that I really enjoy is that I truly believe that on any given day, uh, I can learn from every individual in the room. That, that there's always something, their view of, of, of a topic, maybe it's something I haven't seen before, or haven't understood before. I find it so incredibly helpful and I hope that you do as well. The final words that we have then are from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and chapter 3. And the reason why is because we're going through the book of Acts, okay? And so it's talking about Paul being in Corinth. Apollos is, is going to be in Corinth as well. But now what, what's happened is in the book of 1 Corinthians, we're going to see that there were issues in the church where they needed some coaching uh, that, that the church did. And Apollos is part of this as well. And so in 1 Corinthians 1, 11 and 12, it says this, My brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this, one of you says, I follow Paul, another, I follow Apollos, another, I follow Cephas, and still another, I follow Christ. And, and so we just stop there for a moment, and what we see is that when you have someone like Apollos, who's a, a, a great preacher, and people found him an, an incredible help to their faith, then you have someone like the Apostle Paul who's going around doing these missionary journeys. Then you have Peter, that it's almost like having three pastors. And what's so, sometimes when you're in a church that has more than one pastor, people want to pick favorites. And, and they say, oh, I like this pastor, I like that pastor. And, and Paul, and thank God, Apollos and Peter said, you know what, none of that. No. That is not the kind of, of quarrels we are going to have in this church. And in order for that to happen, Apollos needed to be coachable. So did Paul, but so did the people. And then later in chapter 3, uh, I think Paul does a great job of summarizing it when he says, I planted the seed of God's word. Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. And what it shows is how we work together as a team. 
we learn and grow using different, different gifts, different abilities. And, and at the end of the day, what are we trying to do? Prove this truth that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. That through Christ's death and resurrection, your sins are forgiven. That you are loved by God. And, and it's this truth that we continue to build on, we continue to grow on. And, and so his ability, Apollos' ability, but more than that, his ability to be coached, what that did was help him to unite and to grow the church. And as you look now at, at, of where you go from here today, I would like to give you the encouragement that I would have given to me 30 years ago. And that was, for me, it was, Dan, I know you just graduated from the seminary, and I know you've gone through a lot of school, but you still have a lot to learn. And for that reason, keep on learning and growing. Learn and grow from your church. Learn and grow from other pastors. Learn and grow from other books that you read. Learn and grow in areas where, that have nothing to do about the Bible necessarily by people who have ability that, that you don't and an understanding that you don't because God uses all of that for his church and, and to further the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that's what I tell you today. Sometimes what can happen in churches is, is that when a person goes through maybe something like a confirmation or, or something like that where they say, you know what, I've learned enough. I know the basics of the Bible. Please don't get caught in that trap. Please don't get caught in a trap of complacency that you know enough right now, but rather continue to learn and grow and then watch how God uses you in his church. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you uh, for all the gifts that you have given in your church and all the different people who have, have so many different things. You, you say it's like a part of a body and that is so true, all of us with those unique gifts. And so, Lord, what we pray today is that you would increase in each one of us a hunger, a hunger to continue to learn and grow. And then, Lord, develop us, uh, use other people in our lives uh, so that we can be effective servants for your kingdom. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Thank you.